everyone. Today we are going to learn about mutations. This is the last part in our section about DNA. Um, so we're going to learn about what mutations are uh, and how to identify them. Before we talk too much about mutations, there is one concept you need to understand, and that's the idea that not all of your genes are expressed all the time. So for example, we have a neuron here. The neuron is going to express not every gene that it has, but only the ones that are relevant to the neuron. So there are about 25,000 genes in every cell, and a neuron's only going to express the genes that are necessary for doing its job. So a neuron is a specialized cell. The liver is going to express different genes than the neuron because uh, the liver does something different. So the neuron will express some genes and the liver will express other genes. So just something to keep in mind as we go through um, our lessons about DNA and gene expression. <clears throat> now, uh, in terms of mutations, we already know what mutations are. Um, we need to learn about how we might group them. So one type of mutations are called point mutations. And a point mutation is when there is a single base pair change. Sometimes a point mutation is called a base pair substitution. <clears throat> so the first type of point mutation is called a silent mutation. So what we're going to do is let's take a look in the upper right. Here is some mRNA. And this mRNA is as it should look. So there's the code AUG, AAG, UUU, GGC. And then here are the amino acids, methionine, lysine, phenylalanine, glycine. And then it stops. So this is what the protein should look like. But with a silent mutation, there is a mutation, but there is not an amino acid change. And this is due to that code that we talked about before. That code had some redundancy in it, right? So for example, we should have in a fourth amino acid, the fourth code on GGC, and that should code for glycine. However, if there is a base pair substitution, if there's a point mutation, that GGC could become GGU, right? The C is being replaced for U. And that will change glycine to well, glycine. They both code for glycine. So was there actually a change from this mutation? The answer is no, right? There was not a uh, change from this mutation. So GGC became GGU, and it didn't cause a mutation. <clears throat> then there is a missense mutation, and this is when we do change the amino acid. So for example... We should have, let's look at the top, what we should have, GGC, we'll code for glycine. In a missense mutation, we have AGC. So the first G is changed to an A, and that is going to code for serine. So we should have glycine. We code for the wrong amino acid. We code for serine. So that is a uh, missense. We have missed the mark. We're supposed to have one amino acid. We had another. All right. And then we have a nonsense mutation, and a nonsense mutation is pretty easy to understand. A nonsense mutation will change a codon to a stop codon. So we see that down here at the bottom, AUG, methionine, followed by UAG. It should be AAG, but instead it's an early stop codon, and that is going to stop the protein. <clears throat> okay. So uh, we have a question here, when do mutations affect the next generation? So when are mutations going to affect children or offspring from one generation? Well, if a mutation infects your skin cells, for example, uh, your skin cells are not going to go on to become another generation, are they? Right. So mutations to your skin cells may affect you, right? They could, for example, give you uh, cancer, but they won't go on to the next generation because your skin cells do not go on to become another, an, another embryo. Mutations can only affect the next generation if they affect your gametes, your uh, sperm cells or egg cells. Those are the only 
of your cells that go on to affect the next generation, right? So any mutation to a sperm cell or an egg cell could in fact uh, cause problems in the future. So here is an example of a mut mutation. So let's take a look at what type of the, a mutation this is. So what here's on the left is what we should have CTT in the DNA. We'll code for mRNA, GAA, <clears throat> and that will give us glutamine. But in the mutation, CTT becomes CAT. So notice how that's different. That gives us mRNA of GUA instead of GAA. And that gives us valine. So what kind of mutation is that? That is a missense mutation, right? We've missed the mark. We have the wrong amino acid. And this is actually one tiny little mutation causes a disorder called sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is a condition in which hemoglobin is not formed correctly due to that very missense mutation that we mentioned before, right? There it is. It should be glutamine and it's valine instead. Since we get the wrong amino acid, hemoglobin is made incorrectly and your red blood cells, which should be raft shape, end up being this oblong sort of sickle shape, which makes it harder for the cells to carry oxygen, which as you can imagine, isn't great. And there is treatment now for sickle cell anemia, but it is still a very serious condition. Okay, so what type of mutation is this? Here's what we should have. And then down here, what I'm circling is what we do have. What type of mutation is that? This is a nonsense mutation, right? We should have um, GLN, but instead we have an early stop codon, which is a nonsense mutation. And what about this mutation? What we should have on the top, what we end up with on the bottom. What type of mutation is that? That is a silent mutation, right? Even though it is a mutation, CAA has become CAT. Both of those things code for veiling, so there is no actual change. Okay. Another type of mutation, these are called frame shift mutations. Frame shift mutations shift the reading frame, and that changes everything downstream. So let's take a look at the picture to find out what's going on. Here is what we should have in the upper right. But let's say that we get rid of one of the U's, right? It gets deleted. That U is now missing. And what that means is the G, so right here that I'm circling, that G gets shoved over. So instead of U, 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 the next codon is U, U, G. And that doesn't code for phenylalanine. Instead, it codes for leucine. And because everything is shifting over, the next codon is not glycine, it is alanine. And the next codon is not a stop codon, it's something else, right? We've basically shifted everything over by one, which ruins every amino acid after that point. We could also add in an extra base like we did here. So AAG, and we've added in an extra U, and that shifts everything to the right by one. So that has made an early stop codon. That also is going to change everything after this point. So frame shift mutations are insertions and they are deletions. Insertions are when we add in bases, deletions are when we lose bases. All right, so insertions, um, adding one in, shifting everything over to the right, deletions, losing one, shifting everything over to the left. So frame shift mutations ruin everything past that point. So where would this mutation cause the most change, the beginning or the end of a gene? The answer is the beginning, right? The beginning would change everything after that point. So that would be a, a really bad thing to have one of these mutations at the beginning of a gene. Okay, so what type of mutation is this? Again, DNA we should have at the top, DNA we should we end up with at the bottom. 
All right, so as you can see here, we have inserted an A. So this is an insertion, and it also causes a frame shift. Notice how everything after that point is now different. Okay, here's a question. What category of mutation is more likely to cause a major problem? A point mutation or a frame shift mutation? Well, we learned that a point mutation changes one amino acid and a frame shift mutation will change all of the amino acids that come after the mutation. So the answer is a frame shift. So is there value to mutations? Well, mutations are often bad, right? If you get mutated DNA, that is not a good thing. Mutations can cause diseases like sickle cell anemia or Tay-Sachs disease. Sometimes mutations are neutral, which means nothing happens. It's not bad or good. It's just the same. Somatic mutations, these can lead to cancer. So a somatic mutation would be one that happens to your skin. And mutations of a sperm cell or an egg cell could be passed down to future generations. However, sperm or egg mutations are essential to life because they provide genetic diversity. Mutations to sperm cells and egg cells are one of the reasons why you are a little bit different from your parents and they were different from their parents. One of those reasons is because of mutations that could have occurred in sperm cells or egg cells. Without mutation, there would not be evolution and therefore we would not have changes. So mutation is uh, very relevant when we end up learning about mutation in a couple weeks or when we end up learning about evolution. So some mutations might have no effect or very small effect, but some mutations can have a more dramatic effect. Some mutations are a bigger deal than others. And we will uh, continue talking about that later. That's all I have for now. So let me know if you have any questions.